What's good fam? Greetings from Bokola here in Tanzania. What's good fam? Greetings from Bokoba here in Tanzania. Now Bokoba is the capital city of the Kagera region here in northwestern Tanzania. Now on today's episode I'm just going to take a nice cruise, show you around the city, get a real vibe of the place here on Inspire for Travel. Peace out and enjoy today's episode. Bokoba is a city on the shore of Lake Victoria in northwestern Tanzania almost bordering Uganda and serving as a capital of the Kagera region. It is the heartlands of the Haya people, one of Tanzania's largest tribal groups. And according to indigenous African history, they have been in the region for over 2,000 years. Bukoba was a port village serving as a radio station on the German East Africa between the years of 1885 to 1918. The German colonial administration favored the higher tribe over other tribal groups. In 1915, during the First World War, Britain sent its army from Kenya to conquer the city of Bukoba. After conquering Bukoba from the Germans, the British army, which was made up of people from Africa and soldiers from Britain, sacked and burned down the city and tortured many of the city's indigenous inhabitants. Following the many tortures, and atrocities committed against the people in the region, the city slowly grew by itself over the following years. And after Tanzania's independence in the 1960s, the indigenous higher dynasties lost their recognition as kingdoms by the then government. This slowed the process of development in the region, and in the following decade, Bukoba would once again be threatened, this time by Uganda. The Ugandan government at the time invaded northern Kagera in October 1978, looting villages in the north of Bukoba and annexing it to Uganda in the same month. Ugandan aircraft bombed the city of Bukoba, bridges were exploded, and over 2,000 civilians were killed during the invasion. Although Kagera was liberated on January 1959, Tanzania counter-invaded Uganda and the Uganda and Tanzanian War would only end in June 1979. <laughs> Yeah guys, so right now I'm on the beach here in Bokoba and this is what it looks like here and they got an island over there, they usually do tours, people also live over there as well. So it's really nice, um, especially on the weekends people come out here with their family guys, so it's a really beautiful place. Wow. A border border guy showing me around and um, yeah man just exploring Bokoba ah yeah
Religion plays an integral part in the daily lives of people in Tanzania. And two of the main religions in the country are Christianity and Islam. And as we're riding past, you will observe churches, which are like, for example, the Roman Catholic Church, Anglican Church, and there are also masjids or mosques in the town or city as well. So these are some of the things you will see throughout Tanzania, and you'll also find it in Bukoba. Now, the town also has an airport. There's an airport which caters for a domestic flight. There's also a bus stand. Now, at this bus stand, you can get buses to other parts of Tanzania, and you can get a bus to move on to Uganda. So all my travelers who are thinking, well, when you come to Tanzania, can you get a bus to places like Kenya, Uganda? Yes, you can. And Bukoba is a place where you know it's a strategic location if you're traveling onwards to uganda and if you want to get a bus to that country apart from that there's also a port in the city and i believe there are also boats that travel between bukoba to mwanza so those who are interested in visiting mwanza you can also get a bus and also a boat as well goes across to mwanza so that's something you can check out <laughs> So during my time in Bukoba, I got to experience what the weather is like. And if I had to compare it between places like um, Mbea, Iringa, and these places, Bukoba is definitely a much more milder climate. It's not as cold as these other regions in Tanzania. And I'm talking about the southwestern highland region. Bukoba is much more cool. The weather could be described as what they say as a tropical monsoon climate. So it's quite mild and it doesn't get as cold as Europe at all during the winter season. In the evening times, you might just need a light, a very light jumper or jacket or something like that. And it's not as cold at all. Like when I was in Iringa and Mbea, it was very, very cold there. Like you need a proper winter jacket out there, especially around July, August time. But in Bukoba, no, it's very, the climate is much more milder there. So I really appreciated that.
one of the things I've noticed throughout Bukoba, there's not as many hotels or lodges as other cities I've been to in Tanzania. There are a few lodges around, like I've seen a, around three, which are very near to the bus stand where you can get the intercity buses. And I stayed at one of them. The cost was 20,000 Tanzanian shillings a night. Very, very reasonable. And that's around um, under 15 USD, under 15 US dollars. So, yeah, that was, it was, it was decent. Um, hot and cold water. Breakfast is not provided, so you have to go out and get your own in the mornings. But in terms of security, it was very much safe. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't worried about my safety being there. There's a security guard at night, so everything was cool. Very basic facility, as you know. I'm doing a lot of traveling to different places, so for those who are interested in, you know, something a bit more luxurious, then you'll have to do um, further research. I'm more into you know, affordable accommodation. But there are some upscale hotels um, in Bukoba, but they'll be a bit further away from the bus stand um, in in the city. So you'll probably get hotels near the airport, which are more upscale. So that's something we can check out. And if you're interested, definitely drop an email or sign up to my course and we can get a conversation going and I could provide you with more information. So we're coming up to Bukoba Airport. Now, this airport, of course, caters for domestic flights. So you can get flights that goes to Dar es Salaam, to Mwanza, and other uh, cities in Tanzania. Now, the airline like Air Tanzania usually flies there, and they're very, very scheduled flights. So that's something you'll have to check if you're interested in um, traveling to other parts of Tanzania. But it's still convenient to know that at least if you do visit the city, there is an airport and you can use it to take you to different parts of the country here in Tanzania. So through, throughout my time in Tanzania, I always ask myself the following questions. What really happened here? And the more you dig deeper, you realize there's more that meets the surface. There's a lot of history in Tanzania which is not talked about. And people still have the wounds from past atrocities that happened in the region. And still people are still welcoming and smiling. It's actually a miracle. But what I see in the eyes of the people in various regions in Tanzania, where it be from what they experience in the farming in the Ruvuma region, or the kidnappings in Pangani, or the wars in Bukoba, people are still resilient. And what I'm seeing in Tanzania today is that they are growing. They are growing and they're improving slowly, but surely they will get there. And infrastructure is slowly being built. And with more people visiting the region, it will also improve the, co the economy of the country of Tanzania. So when you visit any region in Tanzania, it will be always good to do your research about that region and you will understand why certain things are the way they are. And you'll understand some of the things the people there have been through.